these four tips will really really help you all right so let me get straight into this because it's a bank holiday weekend and you probably got better things to be doing than watching me so let me get straight into this so the first thing i want to share with you which will save you hundreds and hundreds of pounds is the right septic tank all right so if you're installing or you're looking for septic tanks you know at the moment on google you'll come across two types of septic tanks okay so tank one will be the onion tank okay and the onion tank looks something like like that all right and the second tank is they call it a bullet um a bullet septic tank <clears throat> and they call it bullet because funny enough they look like a bullet all right so they've got strong ribs on so those are the two types of septic tanks that you'll come across on the uk market now let me give you the pros and the cons of each one all right so if i put pros here and have we got any room there yep i can put pros here all right so if we just base it on a one to two bedroom house so if i if i so to keep it simple although the principle will be the same for both tanks as you go up if we just base this on a one to two bedroomed bedroomed house okay and uh, all right so that's the size septic tanks we're going for all right now the pros with an onion tank is that they're typically cheaper to buy all right so up front they are cheaper to buy all right so and on here i'm going to put the cons all right so the cons pros and the cons there we go all right so when i say cheaper to buy typically an onion septic tank that will do one to two bedrooms will typically cost you ooh, anywhere from say um 499 to 599 all right the the bullet septic tank will cost you probably about in fact oh i've got that wrong <laughs> let's do that again 399 to 499 there you go that's better the bullet septic tank will cost you so i can put in the cons right it'll cost you anywhere from four nine uh from yeah four nine nine to five nine nine so we can put 100 to 200 pound more can we get that on there yes we have okay so and that initially if you're on a budget could be um you know a selling point to you because i mean god 100 to 200 quid in your pocket is is a damn good thing and the company selling the onion tanks will say to you look you know yeah mate you know that's why we sell lots of onion tanks because they're a lot cheaper but this is what i want you to take into consideration they do they are cheaper on the front end but they cost you a hell of a lot more on the back end let me show you what i mean all right, so we're 200 quid out at the moment, all right? You're 200 quid in pocket. Now, the cons are that, I'm, I'm gonna to come to that price difference in a minute, but let me let me show you how the, the, the scales now tip in the favor of the low profile tanks, right? The cons with these are, all right, they are three times uh, uh, taller. All right, so the whole, so they're three times taller. The onion tanks, although they don't look in comparison there, 
they are actually three times taller. So the hole that you've got to dig, right, will take, right, so the hole takes three times longer to dig, right? Which means you're probably looking at an extra day or, you know, an extra two days at least to put it in, right? So the pros on this are you can get, you can install them, install in one hour. All right. So now we're starting to see a difference, aren't we? Right. Another con with these are they are, um, they're made of fiberglass. All right. So they're made of fiberglass, right? And they puncture. They puncture and crack really easy. They're very fragile, okay? So this isn't me, by the way, demonizing onion septic tanks. They came about in the 80s, and they're very, very, very popular tanks. But the technology's moved on, and they've been superseded since then. All right, okay, so let's move on, okay? So with the low-profile one, you can install it within an hour, but this this particular bit now that I'm going to show you is where people make the mistake. And although they save themselves 200 quid up front, they lose on the back end. An onion tank, because they're so light, they need to be concreted in. In fact, if you read the manufacturer's warranty, they will not warranty an onion septic tank unless you concrete them in. Now, to concrete an onion tank in, oh, man, alive. Let's, let's just say a really cheap figure. It's going to cost you, right, depending on the size of the tank, right, it's going to cost you anywhere, right, from 300 to 600 quid to concrete it in. The bullet septic tanks, the pros are they don't need any concrete. They don't need any concrete at all. All that they need is a tiny bit of, because they're made in the way that they're made, they're very shallow. So they don't pop out the ground like the onion tanks. And they're very, very strong. So they don't puncture and they don't break. So I'm going to put very strong here. And they're very light, but they're very strong. And there's no concrete. Basically, you can just backfill up to about here with some granular backfill up to about there. And then this bit here is topsoil. And typically, you'll put in about three to four ton of gravel, which say, let's say it's 45 quid a bag, so 90. So it's going to cost you right, 180 quid. So it's going to cost you about 180 quid in, in gravel, okay? Now, on the onion tanks as well, right, in a lot of cases, you actually have to also, as well as the concrete, you have to put straps on them and anchor them down to a big lintel, like the ones they put in houses. And um, I would say of at least 60 to 70% of situations and circumstances, you'll need those straps and those lentils to put them in. You're, all right, okay, so, and those straps are easily two to 300 quid. On top of that, you're gonna need a bigger digger because it's a bigger hole and you need the bigger reach of the, biggest to do, uh, of the diggers to do so. The pros are with the low profile ones, you can just put them in with a ton and a half digger on the onion tanks you need at least a three to five ton digger right or a jcb which is going to increase the cost of installation easily right by three to four hundred quid so i'm just going to stop there because i don't want to get muddy the waters but the point i'm making is as you go from a three to four bedroom five to six bedroom seven to eight bedroom etc 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 you can double and quadruple these figures all right so just rewinding now and coming back to the beginning 
the onion tank will save you 200, 200 quid right, on the front end. But, okay, but on the back end, it's going to cost you, oh, let's do a mean average, right, between the three and the six. Let's call it 450, 550, 650, 700 quid, right? I reckon, and it's about right, although they'll cost you five, 500 and odd quid to buy, it typically costs, so let's take that, 450, 550, 650, 750. So it's going to cost, and that's about right. Yeah, that's about right. It's about, 50, about 13, 1,400 quid, right, it'll take to install that septic tank. Right, 13 to 1,400 quid to buy that tank and install it. Right? In total... The bullet septic tank, right? Taking all these factors into consideration. So we've got um, five, we've got uh, six, uh, six, seven, eight. So let's say, okay. So on the so overall, overall. The job is, I reckon it's going to cost you about 800 quid in addition. So it's going to cost you, so if that's four to five, so six. So it's going to cost you about two. Let's just say, right, let's just say, for argument's sake, let's go overboard and say it's going to cost you uh, all in 900 quid to do that. So, I mean, so even though you've saved 200 quid up front on there, typically putting an onion tank in, you'll lose on the back end easily five, six, 700 quid. So that's tip number one I wanted to show you. If you're gonna pick a tank, an onion tank, please, please, please don't go for one just because you're gonna save two, two or 300 quid up front. And you will. I mean, if you go for a three or four bedroom tank, that's going to cost you six to seven hundred quid compared to, say, a thousand quid. But these figures double. Right. So with the three to four bedroom, right, these figures epic, heck, are going to go to two, two and a half thousand quid, where this is only going to go up about two, three hundred quid. So as you go up, right, this is going to cost you probably twelve hundred quid to put the three to four bedroom in, it's going to cost you about 2,200 quid. So this is what I'm saying. Once you start going up from here, the numbers just get nuts, right? So you're saving a couple of hundred quid up front, but you'll end up paying a couple of thousand quid out on the back end. So that's my tip number one when choosing um, a septic tank. Always go for the low profile ones for that reason. Okay, so that's tip number one. Tip number two. If you're putting a septic tank and soak away in, right? If you're putting a septic tank and soak away in, right, let me just draw this. So this is tip number two now. So look, let's say you've bought your bullet tank, you put it in the ground, here's the, the grass. There we go, that's the grass, okay? And this is your inlet pipe from the house. This next tip will literally save you hundreds and hundreds of pounds as well, right? This next tip. So let's say that's your outlet pipe. Well, it's getting late. And I'm not the best artist in the world. All right, let's just try that again. All right, I won't do it as long. All right, so, so that's your outlet, <laughs> outlet pipe. It looks something like that, but you get the point. All right, what most people do, they put their tank in, and then that leads straight to their soak away. All right, so let's say that's a soak away pit, it's soak away crates, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. But what happens is, right, because of the suspended solids in the liquid inside the tank, although the tank has got a baffle inside that separates the liquids and the solids. There's something called suspended solids. 
all right, that float around in the water. And they are, if you looked under a microscope, microscope, I suppose it looks like jellyfish, but there's like this big kind of massive swarm of jellyfish, but they're not jellyfish. It's just like jellified um, particles. And those jellyfied particles will make their way from there into the soak away. Number two, one of the biggest enemy of septic tanks is sanitary towels and baby wipes. Now, if if they just have, if you've got an inlet pipe in and an inlet pipe out straight to your soak away, those sanitary towels and all the debris will come in, they'll float around the tank in the water, and then they'll float straight out into the soak away and block all the pipes up, right? And the only way to fix that is to get Dyna Rod out, and they'll charge you, man, alive, four, five, six hundred quid to come and do it. Um, you can do it on your house insurance, but you've only got two or three times to do that a year. But the point is, if they can't unblock it, you're going to have to have a new soak away, and it's going to end up costing you like three, four thousand quid. So I'm just going to show you something now, a really simple tip to save you hundreds and hundreds of pounds, right? Let me just find where that's gone. It's called a German silt chamber. Don't ask me why <laughs> it's called a German silt chamber. I think maybe they were invented in Germany, but let's say this is your tank again, look. All right, so we've got a bullet septic tank here, look. There we go. And we've got an inlet pipe in, and we've got an outlet pipe out. And um, the German silt chamber looks something like that. Looks like a manhole chamber. And it's got an inlet in, and it's got an inlet out, all right? So that's typically what it looks like, okay? And basically what happens is this. They're amazing for trapping all the liquids and I'm not trapping all the liquids, for trapping all the debris, sorry, right? So this goes here. So put your German silk chamber in there. All right. And then let me show you how they work. So this goes to the soak away now. That goes to the soak away, okay? Okay. So you've got your wastewater comes in and it fills up to there and then goes out to here. But now let me show you what happens, right? Let's say people do it accidentally do you know or do they just don't listen to the rules of you're not supposed to use sanitary towels and baby wipes and nappies and stuff with a septic tank but look let me just show you all right so here's all the debris so this is sanitary towels baby wipes nappies all kinds of stuff that shouldn't be in the septic tank as soon as they reach the tide mark there they come down here float into there but this is the german silk chamber and these, they cost about, um, I think they're about 149 quid, something like that, German silt chamber. Inside, they've got this um, uh, material, I suppose. Um, that's the best way to describe it, that actually traps and blocks all that debris. So all the debris comes straight in from the septic tank, and it gets trapped in here and it can't make its way out then through the outlet pipe to the soak away. The water will go through to the soak away. And then what you do once a year, once every six months, get the septic tank man to come and just suck it out. Just lift the lid, the lid's there, over with the grass, and just take the, the filter out there, wash it down with a hose or get the septic tank emptying man just to suck it in. And that will save you, as I said, they're about 149 pounds. And, um, yeah, that will save you hundreds and hundreds of pounds, especially like it's Boxing Day or it's an Easter weekend or some kind of holiday. That's normally when things get blocked and, and go wrong. Well, with one of those, you won't get any blockages. It's uh, it, it, They're fantastic. Whoever invented them needs a, a medal, I tell you. Oh, there we go. So that's tip number two. <clears throat> Tip number three is this. If you've got a postage stamp size garden, 
All right, so there's the garden. Here's the house. I'm not sure all houses look like this, but I used to watch uh, Play School when I was younger. I'm sure they look like this. There you go. There's some smoke going up there. I'm not sure how politically correct smoke coming from the chimney is now. With all the eco warriors protesting in London for climate change, but um, but it's illustrative purposes only. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, and you've got your pipe that comes out of here, and uh, let's say this goes into your tank here, and you've got a nice bullet tank there. But let's say there's the fence. And there's your neighbor's house, right? And this is your neighbor's house. And so let's say you've got a postage stamp size garden, okay? Postage stamp size garden and your back garden, you've just got no back garden there. So how on earth do you put a soak away in a small postage stamp, stamp size garden like that? Because Many companies will tell you that, oh, man, you can't put a herringbone system in there, so you can't put one in. What I mean by herringbone system, just looking down at an aerial view now of a herringbone system, that's the manhole chamber. So it, the old traditional herringbone systems would be something like that. And they would cover like, oh, man, alive. Then they'd be crossed like that. And as the liquid drains through them, the herringbone system, all the liquid drains out of them. And these herringbone systems can, oh man alive, can go from like 100 to 300 foot in length. And they could be, man alive, anywhere from like 50 to 100 foot wide, 150 foot wide. So if you've only got a posted samp size garden, that's like 50 foot long right and the septic tank is taking up 25 foot of that and you've only got 25 foot garden left what do you do <clears throat> well a really simple tip and a really good answer so you know, in a lot of cases lots of people will put a cesspool in they won't they think oh we can't put a soak away in here so they put a cesspool in never ever ever put a cesspool in unless man alive unless it's the last resort and you know people just don't put cesspools in these days um unless you know you're living in a wildlife protection zone in the middle of I, mean, I don't know a wildlife conservation park in the middle of alton tower safari park something like that then you probably would have to have a cesspool because of the to minimize the impact of pollution but in your normal domestic situation people don't put them in anymore right you just don't why because when it fills up you'll have to get it emptied and on a domestic connected to a domestic house you probably have to get that emptied three four times a week at 200 pounds a time it would cost you like five to eight hundred quid a week to do that so what's the other option well if you can't put a herringbone system in put some soak away crates in the and uh, soak away crates they're fully legal they're approved by UK building regs, contrary to what you may read on certain sites on the internet. All oh, soak away crates are illegal, phone the police or trading standards if you know if anyone's telling them. You can't put rainwater crates in as a septic tank soak away. And I'm not telling you to, I'm actually saying they're called septic tank soak away crates, especially designed for septic tanks. And the, the actual soak away size for like a, a one, two, three, four bedroomed house will be something like, um, just as an argument's sake, they can be anything like 10 foot long by 10 foot wide. So the point I'm making is, if you've got a posted stamp size garden and you need to put a septic tank and a soak away in, Septic tank soak away crates is the answer. All right. So lots of people 
in that situation as as more and more houses are going up plots of land are being sold off like for example this house may have had all that land and they sold that bit of the garden off and built another house on there and they had a cesspool in and then the people move in and they realize they've got to get it empty three times a week and they want to know another solution and there's no main drainage there so these are real situation situations people are finding themselves in but they're also real solutions that will save you a lot of money okay and one last tip now and then i'm going to go one last tip and <clears throat> this tip is probably the best tip of the evening that i could give you now right this is the best tip of the evening it's called a govern Government compliance form, right? If you're a septic tank owner and you haven't got a government compliance form, then sooner or later you'll really, really regret it. Let me give you two instances. On the 1st of Jan 2020, rules and regulations for septic tank owners are changing some of the biggest changes this country's seen oh man in the last 300 years right and what will happen is government inspectors are going to go around everyone's house with a septic tank yes believe it or not they're going to and people saying oh well how will they know where i live i got a septic tank they'll just go around the emptying firms and get the data off them if they don't already know that you've got a septic tank Government know everything. Big brother, you know, you know, these data firms now they know what color underpants we're wearing, never mind what whether we've got a septic tank or not. So they'll come around and they'll ask you to see a government compliance form. The government compliance form is basically a template you can find on UK building regs, certain blanks miss, missing out of it. And in the blanks, they want you to make your own compliance form. They want you to put what system you've got in, 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 fill in the blanks, what system you've got, the capacity of it, um, the size of it, whether it's electric, whether it's non-electric, whether you've maintained it, whether the people before you maintained it, if you've had it, ever had it repaired, is there any known faults with it, have you ever had any problems with it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right, that's number one. Number two, if you ever come to sell your property, the people buying your house will ask uh, the solicitor representing the people buying your house will ask you for a government compliance form. Everyone, I would say 90% of people say, a government what? He'll say, no problem. He'll then come back and he said, because you haven't got a government compliance form as um, required by UK building regs, um, my clients, the people buying your house, want to reduce your house price by the, the cost of which it's gonna to cost to install a new septic tank system because you've got no proof as to the condition of your septic tank. We think it's old, we think it's tired, we think it's worn. We don't know if it's working properly or not. We've got a quote for, I don't know, it could be anywhere from 10 to 20,000 quid. And here's three quotes. Um, so if you reduce your house price by the amount, by the quote we've got to put a new system in, we'll buy your property. If you've got a government compliance form, you won't have to go through that rigmarole. The solicitor will come to you. He'll say, have you got a government compliance form? You'll say, yes, we have. Here you go. Oh, okay. You go, okay, you've got that system. No, no, no. Thank you very much. And the problem goes away. Now, government compliance forms, where do you get one from? Well, you can just go to septictank.co.uk, top left-hand corner. You can download them for free. There's no con, there's no catch. I used to sell them for 300 quid each, um, you know, and that was a service that I offered, really helped people out, a uh, very popular service, because um, a lot of work was involved in it, but in it, but in lieu of all the changes coming on the 1st of Jan 2020, I've decided just to give the government compliance form away for free. So all you need to do is download as many copies as you want, Lodge one with your solicitor, put one in your kitchen or your utility room, and all your problems will go away regarding you know all these new septic tank changes. So I hope that's that's four tips that will save you 
thousands of pounds. Where else could you get this kind of information for free? Okay, so all this information and advice I've given you is for free. So look, if you want more free advice, right? If you want free help, then just go to septictank.co.uk or ring me up, and um, you know I'll try and help you. I've been doing this for twenty years. I love. Uh, I install, I repair, I consult for UK building regs, environmental agency. I help them understand the law and the laws regarding septic tanks, sewage treatment plants, soak away. So if you want free help, if you want free advice, or you're looking for some of the best products uh, in the UK at the moment regarding septic tanks, and you want some of the best prices, I'm independent, so I'm not in the pay of any of all these companies, you know, um, that want to make lots of profit, you know, I'm just um, just a normal guy who loves helping people, okay, uh, to do with septic tanks and sewage treatment plants. So, listen, thank you very much for watching my live broadcast, septictank.co.uk, you can go, there's also, um, you can click one of the buttons there, which takes you to septic tank TV, where you can re-watch all these live broadcasts, and there's hundreds of videos I've done that you can watch for free, all of it's free, right? Don't want a penny off you. But listen, thank you very much for watching. Have a great what's left of the bank holiday weekend, and I will speak to you soon.